So I was trolling the internet the other day looking for uh, some software that could do some video analysis uh, that is hopefully free and works well. And I was pretty surprised when I came across this. This is some open source uh, free physics wear that seems to work really well, at least in the 45 minutes I've been uh, trying to use it. If you want a copy of it, here's the website uh, where I where I got it. Uh, I really like that I can use it without having to install it on my actual machine. This will actually run off of a jump drive. Uh, here I have it saved to my desktop. And I'm going to use it to analyze the motion of a slider in uh, my physics class that's sliding down uh, an air track. So I'm going to go to video, import. Uh, the slider's at 2 degrees. This happens to be an MOV file. I haven't really experimented with what files are. Uh, what types work. Uh, you click on here and you can put the axes wherever you want them. Here you can tilt them which comes in handy with a tilted. Ideally you'd want your camera to be perpendicular. And uh, let's give it a scale so let's teach it how far things are. So you click on this tape measure here. I happen to have um, labeled on the wall in the video here the distance one meter but you could use any scale you want really uh, it's important that you click on this number and change it before you start collecting any of the video at least that seems to be the case uh, that I've had in the last half hour uh, so we now have an axis we have a scale and like other software you can click and advance this at least I think you can and mark the positions and it's going to record the time from the video and you can graph and do all sorts of cool stuff but what I really like about this is the auto tracking feature so we want to create a track so let's go here and add a new track this will be a point mass I'm going to change the name here because I can and I'll call it slider which isn't much more creative than mass A I'll try that again And uh, I'll click on the slider, and I'm going to click on this button called Auto Tracker. This is really, really nice, especially if you have to do this a lot of times, more than just once or twice. What we're going to do is we're going to teach it to train in on the object we're following, in this case, the red slider. Uh, I'm going to move the slider so that I'm out of the way, so you don't have to do this at the very beginning of the video. And I'm going to draw this little circle here. Really, I'm going to make it a little more oblong. And the idea ideal scenario is that you capture only what you want and nothing more because what it's looking for are differences so I'm gonna make this big enough to include the bumpers at the ends and this white dot and the red I'm trying not to capture the wall or the track or anything like that this is what it sees the reason is if I capture the wall it's going to be looking for this color even when the slider gets here and that's going to throw it off so I'm trying to capture only what I want. It doesn't have to be a huge area. You might be able to do it with less. The next thing we're going to do is uh, adjust the target. I believe what this is is relative to that mask or that circle where you want the center of mass to be. Uh, I see no reason to change it, um, but it's nice to know that you can. This is a tolerance, meaning how different is this compared to what it's tracking? How, how tolerant will it be? Uh, I'm going to leave it at the, the default setting. The next thing is the box in which it's going to be looking for that mask that you made. I found that the smaller this box is, generally the better it works. So you obviously have to include enough. And I'm going to have it look at just that, maybe just a little more. And now I just hit start. And that is pretty cool. If you've ever used Logger Pro or some other software, you need to click every data point that you want to collect. This is actually doing it for you. It's tracking it. It's going up, going down. And I'm just watching, really. I'm not doing anything. It's kind of a nice gig. Uh, it's going to the top, and then it should come back down one more time. And I'll let it stop on its own. And we now have... Uh, over here you can see a graph of the position versus time data but you're not limited to just position versus time uh, for example I could change this X maybe I want to look at the velocity or the X component of velocity and you can see that graph uh, I could change that to the acceleration which you would expect to be a, a noisier graph and it is 
So let's go back to that velocity in the x direction graph and let's say we want to get the acceleration. If I right click on this graph and hit analyze, a window comes up here and I can select a region of the graph and I can analyze it. So let's say I want to do a fit function and uh, we'll do after it's bounced and is on its way back up and then coming back down. So this is the zero velocity. This is the point at the end at which it bounces. And I'm going to highlight a pretty large section in there. And uh, I'm going to stick with the linear equation. Uh, I'm going to hit auto fit and it's going to give me a slope that is 0.32 meters per second squared. Uh, if you've ever done this calculation for a ramp, it winds up being g times the sine of the angle of the uh, the incline. And when you do that, you get, I think it's 0.34, but you get something really, uh, really close. Uh, I really like this program. I, I like the way you can toggle back and forth between the world view or the video with the tilted image. That's nice. The plot, which we just saw, and you can change the variables the table view, you can copy this data, you can put it into Excel. I haven't messed around with it, but I think you can put vector arrows for velocity, acceleration, position, it can do rotational motion. It's really pretty powerful uh, program, and I especially like the, uh, the tracking feature. So I hope that you find this useful.